All right, guys, we are back, and I have another battery review for you guys. Watt Cycle was so nice, reached out to us about their new mini battery, and they sent me a sample, so let's check it out. We're gonna do a review, we're gonna do a capacity test, and I'm gonna let you know all the details on Tackle That. All right, so before we start, Let's talk about this older watt cycle battery. They sent this to me about two years ago and it's been working great. It's been cycling just about every day on the home solar system. It tested over capacity when I got it and uh, that means they're usually grade A brand new cells, very nicely balanced and she is still working just as good uh, after two years, after all that use. These things can get thousands of cycles. So that's what I love about lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now this is the group 24 size. It's kind of in the middle. There's a, I think a 34, which is even bigger. Let me see if I have a 34. I do. So this would be a 34 size. So a little bit bigger. And this is going to be the mini. So uh, let's open her up and I'll show you that. But first let's pick a knife. Yeah, let's go with the CVV. I like these. Open her up. Uh. Cool. We got our instruction manual. Oh, this is a Bluetooth battery. That's nice. All right, manuals. We'll look at those in a second. Nice foam box. And that is what the mini looks like. All right. Now they're just about as heavy as the bigger ones, but uh, you can tell they're packing more power in a smaller box. So let's bring up the group 24 versus the mini. There we go. So definitely smaller. So a little bit over an inch savings there, about the same height and about an inch savings that way as well. Really cool. And as always, you get terminal screws. Looks like they sent some extra with the covers. No way they did it. I. <laughs> I'm so happy about that guys. So they give you two different screws. Now when you are connecting different things here, sometimes the thickness of the lugs or having multiple lugs, you need some options with the lengths of your screws. If you're just hooking up one, usually the short guy is good, but if you got a few under there, sometimes you need this longer one to have enough threads to get a good bite in there. So that is super exciting. <laughs> They might have saw that from my last re review I did. It is, of course, a deep cycle battery. You can use 100% of lithium iron phosphate without hurting it. And here we got all the specs as far as what we can do, the charging amperage, the discharge amperage. So let's give you a couple quick ones. Um, this is the mini, so we have a maximum continuous discharge of 100 amps, that's important. Uh, we can charge at 20 amps. The overvolt protection is 14.6 volts. The release is 14.2. Discharge protections at 9.2 volts. And the overcharge voltage release is at 10.8 volts. Uh, da, 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 da. Overcurrent discharge protection. Now it says 300 amps. That is pretty awesome. Plus or minus 50 amps. So it could be anywhere from 250 amps to 350 amps maximum discharge. Now, if you're discharging that much from just one single battery, you might want to kind of look at your setup. That's a lot. Um, you kind of want to keep those around the continuous discharge range of 100 amps. It does have high temperature protection 
it does have low temperature protection and that is awesome it weighs 23 let's see the mini 20 pounds almost 21 pounds so it is just a tad lighter than the bigger ones it uses m8 bolt size it um, you charge it at 14.6 volts so you can cycle this battery 6,000 times at an 80% depth of discharge. So you can suck 80% of the life out of this battery and charge it back up and do that 6,000 times without losing the capacity of this battery, which is great. It does say you can run four of these in parallel and four of these in series max. And it does have a Bluetooth connection. We'll log into that BMS and check that out as well. Now, of course, charging tips, make sure to use a 14.6 volt charger, which is a lithium iron phosphate charger. And it says to charge at 20 amps, and that would take five hours if it was 100% dead. Very easy to calculate that. If you're putting in 20 amps every hour, it would take five hours to hit the 100 amp hours. All right, oh, a wire chart. I like when they do this. So you can calculate how much draw you're gonna put on this battery. And we'll do a little mock-up here soon and I'll show you what we're gonna use this battery for. But say um, you're only gonna pull 50 amps out of this battery says you only need eight gauge wire. So it's cool having this little chart. You don't have to go online and use calculators. You got it all in one handy dandy area. How to wire batteries up in parallel and series. And as I noted on the other one, this is not suitable for starting gasoline engines. Now the caveat to that is if it's a really small engine and it doesn't suck more than it I guess it's going to be 250 amps on this then you could use this as a starter uh, battery but if you are going to try to start a car or a truck this will not work you're going to trip that BMS and it's not going to start all right da, 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 da. what's not covered by warranty damage improper insulation loose battery connections series or parallel connections of more four more than four batteries re reverse polarity connection uh, improper storage uh, short circuits in conjunction with other third-party products now that could be tricky I mean that means you couldn't use this with anything right um, so I'm gonna ask him about that one uh, high resistance caused by corrosion or poor crimping, so you need to make sure you use the right batteries and they're properly crimped. Da, 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 da. And if you want to store the battery for a long time, store it at 50%. That's usually what they ship it at. And of course, we will check that right now. All right, she is shipped at 13.08 volts so figure 13.1 volts and let's look at the little chart that they gave us all right so they don't actually put the kind of the breakdown of all of the voltages but they do have a voltage curve and it shows let's see 13 volts kind of we estimate there in between those two I mean it is about 50% battery and 13 volts so yep Bluetooth user manual all right it's got the QR code to download it how to connect to it and then it actually has uh, ways to look at all the different settings and change things like alarms or um, your settings of charge and discharge cutoff voltages and it'll probably tell you how much you're drawing out of the battery so we'll take a look at that in a second all right first thing we're going to do get her charged up now make sure you have a lithium iron phosphate charger it'll say like lf or lfp 
and it has a different charge profile than your lead acid batteries or your SLA or your AGM batteries. So I just get one of these nice multi-use chargers and I can charge just about any 12 volt battery I've got. Cool, she's cranking away and charging at 4.4 amps so it's going to take a few hours to get this thing topped off and then we'll do a discharge test with one of these awesome testers I got on AliExpress and we'll be able to measure the exact capacity. Okay perfect we are all charged up let's take it off the charger and I've also uh, connected this XT60 connector up so my discharge tester will plug up nicely. We are drawing a decent amount of power out of this. We're gonna do a 0.2C test, which means we're gonna drain this battery in five hours. Um, and that equates to about 20 amps. Hopefully, we'll, we'll look at this screen here in a second. But uh, with a 100 amp hour battery, we're gonna drain out 20 amps an hour, so essentially 20 amp hours, and that will take five hours to deplete this battery completely. So let's connect it up and we'll uh, start testing. Also, we always need to make sure that we um, reset the meter, which we'll do now from my phone. All right, reset, let's plug her up. All right, and we should see our voltage, 13.41 volts. Oh, oh we, we gotta set our voltages. So our cutoff voltage needs to be a lot higher than that. So under charge, over charge, over discharge, 9.2 volts. So we're gonna go to 9.2 volts. Actually, yep, 9.2. So let's get this amps cranked up to 20 amps. All right, we're pulling 20 amps. Our capacity is now ticking because we're sucking power out of this battery in the form of heat. And we're gonna calculate all that heat that we created and it's gonna give us a capacity for this battery. So let's fast forward. So while we run this test, let's actually download the Bluetooth app and we'll see what that looks like. So in the instructions, it gives you a QR code. So I scan that. And then it loads a page like this, which is called BMS Meta for Android. I'm on Android. We're going to install that. Got to make sure we don't hit the ads. There's a lot of ads on this page. All right, installing, download anyway. I'm gonna open that. App installed, we're gonna open it. All right, so it gives me a warning. I'm gonna agree. Ooh, bunch of privacy policy. All right, here we go. So, it says connect to the device and then it actually shows this XDZN device. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. It says connecting. Hey, and there we go. So, wow, actually a really nice looking um, app. I'm gonna screenshot that and I'll show you guys. And uh, it's showing the current being drawn, the voltage, the power how many cycles this battery has, that's really cool. In the future, you'll really know uh, where the batteries stand when you purchase them used. Used batteries, these things can last 5,000 plus cycles. So, you know, you might have only use this for a few years and you could sell it and show that you've used it wisely um, and that it still has most of its capacity. And then uh, you'll be able to get a lot more money when you go to resell these batteries instead of right now where it's kind of a gamble if you buy a used battery. All right, has all my cell voltages. So there are four cells run in series. They're each 3.2 volts and that's what gives you your 12 volts and that's what they currently are on now. And it gives you your 13.13 volts actually tells you your battery status, so um, your differential in your cells, there's only a 0.005 voltage differential, 
really good healthy battery. It also has a tab for warnings. I don't have any. And then it has a tab for settings as well. So here you can actually go in and change things like your cutoff voltages and um, any of your parameters, but it does say you need a password. So I'm thinking you need to get that from the manufacturer because they will put in all the correct settings for you. Let's just scan real quick and see if I see a password. I don't see a password, but it, they do have an email and a website that you can go to. And I'm sure they can give you that information if you need it. We're at 98% capacity. Everything is looking good. Our temperature and our voltages are all looking good. So we'll let this run and uh, we'll come back and see uh, how many amp hours we can get out of this 100 amp hour battery. Here we are checking in. We are a few hours. We're still chugging away at 20 amps. We've done 70 amp hours. So just uh, about 30 amp hours to go left. All right, we are about to hit 100 amp hours. We're at 98 amp hours right now. And I'll pull up the app for you guys. 11% left on the battery, but what I'm really impressed is, is how equal these cells are. The difference under load is 0.005 or four. That's four thousandths or five thousandths of a volt difference between all four cells so just really high quality stuff you can tell it's brand new grade a cells and i have no doubt we're going to hit over 100 amp hours let's see how far the results are in 102.8 amp hours so really good high quality cells your battery is always should test over the capacity especially when they're new and as those cells kind of wear out over time you'll see a little bit of degradation in the cells and the capacity will go down a little bit over time but lithium iron phosphate is a great technology these are great as we showed you on the bms nicely balanced cells good quality stuff the other thing is um, the the discharge tester only was set to 9.2 but we were hitting 10 volts and the BMS was cutting off. So there is actually probably some more power in those cells, probably would have gotten us up to maybe 105, 106 amp hours, which is pretty typical. But since the BMS is set for 10 volts instead of 9.2, there is a little bit left in the cells, but honestly, I prefer that. The thing that hurts these batteries the most is leaving them on a low voltage and then just letting them sit. So I'd rather them sit around in case that happened with a little bit of extra power. That way, when you have the slight self uh, discharge, I think it's called, that happens on any lithium batteries, um, your chances are you can go longer without actually damaging the cell. So let's not damage this anymore. Let's give her a fresh charge and uh, we'll come back. Now, if you guys are in the market for this battery, check out the links below. It'll take you to Amazon where you can get the latest deal on this. And of course, um, you know, it definitely helps the channel out. So I appreciate your support. All right, thank you so much for joining that. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining. That's it for this video today. In the next video, we're gonna get some use out of this battery. We're gonna hook it up to an inverter and we're gonna make a nice big battery bank, something you can power some appliances with and uh, hook your cell phone up and charge it and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. So make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.